Well, the next metal we are going to discuss is copper, extraction of copper. Important ore of copper is CuFeS2. This is the chemical composition. The name is copper pyrites also called as chalcopyrites. This consists of cuprous sulphide and ferrous sulphide. So you can realize that the ratio of copper and iron is 1 is to 1. So you have lots of iron as an impurity in the ore. So we need several stages uh, of removal of iron. Uh, you cannot remove all the iron in one go. Well, the first step involved in, in this is concentration of ore. concentration of ore and because it is a sulphide ore be concentrated by the technique froth notation. It is the same method we put powdered ore in a tank, we put lots of water, we add pine oil and then we blow air and agitate the mixture froth is formed. Ore particles will stick to the froth and this is recovered and allowed to collapse then oil separates out or particles are recovered. This is concentration by froth flotation technique. Next step is roasting. Here the ore is heated in air. As long as you know Fe is more active, Fe is present above copper in the activity series, Fe is more active than copper. So, Fe will get oxidized in preference to copper. As long as Fe S ferrous sulphide is available, copper sulphide will not get a chance to get oxidized. So, you lose. Here we lose Fe as Fe SiO3 and you lose moisture. Moisture is lost. Volatile impurities. Volatile impurities are lost. some of the Fe will be lost as FeSiO3 because this is associated with some sand. Uh, when you oxidize it, ferrous sulphide will become ferrous oxide. This will react with sand present in it and it will be lost as FeSiO3. You still have lots of FeS and Cu2S in the mixture. After roasting, the next step is smelting. Smelting is done in blast furnace. Here what we do is we take the roasted ore, you add coke, coke will work as a fuel, uh, you add SiO2 and air, hot air. Most of the Fe will be removed as FeSiO3 slag and you still have Cu2S. I told you as long as FeS is present, uh, Cu2S will not get oxidized to copper oxide. So, you get rid of most of the Fe in this process, but you will not be able to oxidize copper sulphide. Even any small amount of copper sulphide becomes copper oxide. It again becomes copper sulphide by reacting with ferrous sulphide. As long as FeS, more active metal is available, Fe is available, copper will not get oxidized. So, it is impossible to oxidize Cu2S in presence of FeS. When FeS, when FeS and Cu2S are present together, you cannot oxidize this without oxidizing this. If it gets oxidized, then it will immediately get reduced by this exchange reaction takes place. The end result of smelting is called as matte. Matte consists of Cu2S and FES. Uh, the amount of FES present is less than what you had in the very beginning. This is mat. Now, the next step is bessemerization. After smelting, we do what is called as bessemerization. Here, we use bessemer converter. This is the name of the furnace in which you do this decimerization. Here we 
take mat which consists of CO2S and FES. Uh, fine sand we blow air and we heat it then Fe will be lost as FeSiO3 this will appear as a green flame at the mouth of the Bessemer converter this time you lose all the Fe as FeSiO3. After this, this will be burnt off. When the color of the flame at the mouth of the converter changes, like it will be green flame because of FeSiO3. If the color changes, then you can assume that all the Fe has been lost. Now, uh, now cut the supply of sand and continue passing air and continue heating then what happens is some of the copper sulphide will get oxidized to copper oxide. Then you cut the supply of air and continue heating. Then what happens you know further transformation of copper sulphide to copper oxide will not take place but the reaction between copper sulphide and copper oxide starts taking place which you call it as auto reduction. So there are three stages in bessemerization. The first stage is you heat mat with uh, in presence of fine sand and air that is the first stage you heat in presence of fine sand and air second stage is you cut the supply of sand and continue heating and passing air and the third stage is stop passing air and continue heating so when when you are first passing sand then fes will get oxidized to feo next moment it becomes fesio3 and when you cut the supply of sand this you do when you when the color of the flame at the mouth of the converter changes because it burns with a green flame as long as Fe is present. Then cut the supply of sand and then continue heating and passing air. This will oxidize some of the copper sulphide to copper oxide. Then sufficient amount of copper sulphide has been changed to copper oxide. Now cut the supply of air and continue heating. This time auto reduction takes place and you get copper. I will show you with the help of equation. Now look at the various now look at the various reactions which take place in the Bessemer converter. FeS reacts with oxygen, it becomes FeO, SO2 is lost. FeO then reacts with SiO2 that is sand and becomes FeSiO3. It is this substance which is burning at the mouth of the furnace with green flame. If the color changes that means formation of this substance has been stopped. That means FES has been totally used up. Now the next reaction which can take place when all the FES has been removed then copper sulphide will get a chance to get oxidized. You get copper oxide and SO2. This again escapes out. When sufficient amount of copper oxide is formed now look at this you will realize Cu2O reacts with left out Cu2S and you get copper plus SO2. Now I will try to this reaction is called as auto reduction I will try to balance it uh, take this two, uh, two moles two moles of this will react with one mole of this and you get uh, uh, six moles of this and one mole of SO2. That means you need to see to it that two third of cuprous sulphide is oxidized and one third of cuprous sulphide is still left out then two is to one reaction between these two will take place and you get metallic copper like this. It is not possible to exactly achieve this type of transformation but you know you can always try you, you have a method of you know recovering the sample from the furnace and analyzing it or when to stop passing air this continues as long as you are passing air at this stage you stop passing air and this reaction takes place this is the actual auto reduction process which takes place the copper which you get at the end of bessemerization it is called as blister copper blister copper then you we have so far we have talked about concentration is done by froth flotation then we have discussed about roasting that is the second stage third stage is smelting 
fourth stage is bismerization and then the fifth stage is pulling here uh, molten metal molten metal that is copper is stirred with green wooden logs molten metal is stirred with green wooden poles so here the hydrocarbons present in the green wooden logs will uh, volatilize they reduce the left out copper oxide if any traces of copper oxide is present those are oxidized and due to stirring any volatile impurities are present those also will get a chance to escape out so pooling is a very old technique and it is uh, still being followed to some extent we have other methods also fine so here you can manage to uh, reduce left out copper oxide in the blister copper then finally you have electrolytic refining in electrolytic refining impure copper acts as anode pure copper acts as cathode and aqueous copper sulfate is the electrolyte aqueous copper sulfate acts as electrolyte impure copper is made anode and pure copper acts as cathode so on passing current uh, anodic oxidation takes place cu2 plus becomes cu becomes cu2 plus see this is the reaction taking place at anode cu becomes cu2 plus by losing two electrons anodic oxidation takes place and the reaction which takes place at cathode is cu2 plus picks up two electrons and becomes cu so as you continue passing current mass of anode decreases and mass of cathode increases and all the impurities fall down as anode mud here uh, any zinc impurity present will dissolve in the electrolyte as zinc sulfate the anode mud consists of silver and gold anode mud consists of silver and gold any traces of zinc present in the uh, metal will dissolve in the electrolyte so that's how copper is extracted from its ore